less small stories. This could be longer than chapter one. Let's start. A first. Right. We do chapter two to chapter four. Okay, let me turn the page. Okay. Chapter two. Mr. Willy Wonka's Blackberry. In the evenings, after he had finished his soup of watery cabbage soup, Charlie always went into the room of four grandparents to list their stories and then afterwards to say goodnight. Every one of those old people was ordinary. They were all as shivered as prunes and as bonny as made his appearance. They lay huddled in their one bed and either the end with nightcaps on to keep their heads warm during the time away with opening and heard Charlie's voice saying good evening Grandpa Joe and Grandpa Joseph and four of them would suddenly sit up and their old And the talking would begin, for they loved this, and his evening visits were something that their mother and father would come in as well and stand by the door, listening to stories that the old people told and thus filled the pairs half an hour. Every night, this room would become a happy place and the whole family would forget that it was hungry and poor. One evening, when Charlie went and see his grandparents, he said to them, It's really true that Mr. Willy Wonka's doctor is the biggest in the world. True, cried all the of them. Of course it's true. Good heavens, did he know that? Is about 50 times bigger than any other. And if is Mr. Willy Wonka really the cleverest chocolate maker in the world? My dear boy, said Grandpa Joe, raising himself up a little higher on his pillow. Mr. Willy Wonka is the most amazing, the most advanced chocolate maker in the world has ever seen. I thought everyone knew that. I knew he was famous, Grandpa Joe, and I know he was clever. Clever, cried the old man. He's more than that. He's a magician of chocolate. He can make anything he wants. Isn't that fact, my dears? The other three old people nodded their heads slowly and up and down and said, Absolutely true, just as true it can be. And Grandpa Joe said, you mean to say I never told you about Mr. Willy Wonka and his factory? Never, answered little Charlie. Good heavens, above, I don't know what's the matter with me. Will you tell me now, Grandpa Joe, please? I currently will. Stand behind me on the bed, my dear, and listen carefully. Next page. List of the Four grandparents. Whoa. He was 96 and a half. And that is just about as old as anybody can be. Like all extremely old people, he was decided and weak. And thought they were sick a little. But the evenings, when Charlie, his behold, was in the room, he seemed in some marvellous way to grow quite young again. All his tiredness fell away from him and become as eager and excited as a young boy. Oh, what a man! He is this Billy Wonka, cried Chum Joe. Do you know, Dogs, man, that he has himself invented more than 200 new kinds of chocolate bars? 
Each with a different center, each far sweeter and creamier and more delicious than any the chocolate factories can make. Perfectly true, cried Copy Joseph, and he seeds them t t to all the four corners of the earth. Is it that so, Grumpy Joe? It is, my dear. It is and to all kinds and paradise of the world as well. But it isn't only chocolate bar that he makes. Oh dear me, no. He has really fantastic adventures up his sleeve. Mr. Willigor has, did you know that he invented a way of making chocolate ice cream? So it's the ruptures. You can leave it lying in the sun all morning on a hot day. It won't go running, but that's impossible, said little Charlie, starting at his scrub far. Of course it's impossible, cried Grump too. It's completely, but Mr. Willy Wonka has done it. Quite right, the other breed, nodding their heads. <laughs> Mr. Wonka has done it. And then, again, Grandpa Joe went on speaking very slowly now, so that Charlie wouldn't miss a world. Mr. Willy Wonka can make marshmallows that taste of violets, and rich camels that change colour every ten seconds as you suck them. And the moment you put them uh, between your lips, he can sugar balloons that can blow up in all the side before you pop them with a pin. Them uh, by a secret. He can make lovely blue bird eggs with black spots on oh, no. them. And when you put one of these in your mouth, it kind of gets smaller and smaller until Pink Sugary Baby sits on top of your tongue. Grandpa Joe paused and ran the point of his toe slowly under his lips. It makes my mouth water just mine too, said little Charlie. But please go on while... What they were talking. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket, Char Charlie Char and Farmer, had come quietly into the room and now just sat there. Door listened. Tell Charlie about the craziest Indian prince, said Bridges. He likes to hear that. Wow. That's a long eight minutes. You mean Prince Potter? said Grandpa Joe. And he began chuckling with laughter, completely dotty. Ha ha! said Grandpa George. But very rich, said Grandpa George. What did he do? asked Charlotte and Jilly. Listen, said Grandpa Joe, and I'll tell you. Mr. Willie, Miss Chapter 3 Mr. Wonka and the Indian Prince. One more chapter. Prince stood. Oh, no, I can't read that word. Wrote a letter to Mr. Willy Wonka, said Grandpa Joe, and asked him to come all the way to India and build a croissant place out of chocolate. Did Mr. Willy Wonka do it, Grandpa? He did. Indeed, and what a place it was. It had 100 rooms, and everything was made of either dark or light chocolate. The bricks were chocolate, and the center of holding them together was chocolate, and the windows were chocolate. And all the walls they were made of chocolate. So were uh, the carpets, and the pictures, and the furniture, and the beds, and... When he turned on the taps, the bathroom hot chocolate pouring out. When it was all finished, Mr. Willie could say, I warn you though, it won't last very long. So you better start eating it right away. Nonsense, shouted the prince. I'm not going to eat 
my place. I'm not even going to nibble the staircase or lick the walls. I'm going to live in it. But Mr. Walker was right. Of course, because... Soon after this day came a very hot day with a boiling sun and the whole place began to melt. And then it sank slowly to the ground and the crazy person who was doing in the living room at the woke up himself in the living room. At the time, woke up to find himself swimming around in a huge brown sticky lake of chocolate. Little Charlie sat very still on the edge of the bed, starting at his grandfather. Charlie's face was bright and his eyes were stretched so wide. You could see white all around. Is all this really true? he asked. Oh, are you pulling my leg? It's true, cried all four of old people. And I'll tell you something else that said, Grandpa Joe, Charlie, whisper, nobody ever comes out. Out of where? asked Charlie, and nobody ever goes in. And where? cried Charlie. What does that do, I called. Grandpa, what do you mean? I mean workers. Charlie? Workers? All factories, said Grump Joe, are workers streaming in and out of the gates in the morning, and a single person going into that place or coming out? Little Charlie looked slowly around at each other four of all the faces, one after the other, and they all looked back to him. They were friendly, smiling. Face, but they were also quiet, serious. There was no sign of choking or leg pulling or on any of them. Well, have you asked Grandpa Joe? I really don't know. Grandpa Charlie, <laughs> what? Struggled. Whenever I walked past the gate seem to be closed exactly said grub joe but there's must be people working there and there are people charlie not all the people anyway i do cried charlie aha that is you that's another miss willicoy's cleverness charlie's dear miss bunny called out from where she was standing by the door it's time for bed that's enough for tonight. But mother, you must hear tomorrow. Hear yeah. tomorrow, my darling. That's right, said Grandpa Joe. I'll tell you the rest of the tomorrow evening. Chapter 4. See you later. 13 minutes story. Enjoy the story. Can we reach two likes to make? to do more chapters. Good night.